All right, so what's up, uh, guys? Uh, thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We have a really special video. It's kind of a podcast. Uh, we're kind of talking about wrestling and mindset and kind of what you guys uh, can do during you know this this time and kind of everything. Just talking about everything wrestling that you guys have questions for. Uh, so, Josh, if you want to give a little introduction. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on, Caden. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Josh Hinzey, which is for Wrestling Mindset. So... So, um, yeah, if you guys do not know Wrestling Mindset, it's kind of like a company and they kind of specialize in, well, for Wrestling Mindset, it's like wrestling, kind of helping the athletes, you know, in season, out of season, uh, different things like that. And they helped me a lot over the years. And Josh, especially, especially with our team, it's been the best season our team has. So uh, we have Josh to thank a lot of that for. Um, so one of, one of the questions um, is to, to discuss about how to be mentally prepared before a match, like before it starts and how to physically prepare also. What are your thoughts on that? Um, well, mental preparation, I mean, one of the things that we work with is with our athletes is on developing a pre-match routine. So um, before we even get into the, um, you know, what all entails, it's first important to do, uh, kind of go through what we call like our mindset checklist. So basically, Mindset checklist is um, kind of identifying the individual athletes kind of strengths and weaknesses as well as kind of some of the predetermined um, thoughts or feelings that they might have based on past experiences or past matches. So we kind of identify like what are the thoughts and feelings that you typically have in your you know three best matches that you can ever remember. And, and then vice versa, what are the thoughts and feelings that you had before, you know, your three worst matches? And um, just to clarify, like, best match doesn't always mean that you won, and worst match doesn't always mean that you We're always focusing on performance. And so once we've identified those, we're able to uh, help the athlete kind of uh, sift through, you know, a series of different um, strategies and different things that's going to work best for them. So when the thought and feeling comes into their mind, they have a, a way to um, appropriately. So mm -hmm. that's kind of on the mental part of it. Um, you know, there's also like different visualization type stuff that's within the pre-match routine. As far as physically, um, you know, every wrestler kind of develops their own uh, pre-match routine. You know, and that's the, that's the fun of it is we don't want to make it a cookie cutter, uh, you know, program. So we want to, want you to have fun with it and make something that's a little bit unique or, um, you know, different. So, uh, but with all that being said, there are some consistent variables that we always recommend. So, um, you know, we'll just say that you're, you know, 15, 20 minutes out from a match, um, you know, getting something, you know, doing something that's going to get your heart rate up, get a little bit of a sweat going, generally start with multiple layers of clothing. Um, and as you work through the pre-match routine, you're kind of slowly stripping off airs until right before the match. The last thing you should have on is your, your t-shirt, headgear, if the match prior to you is done, you can just rip the t-shirt, go check in at the table. Um, back to kind of, you know, after you get your heart rate up, um, a series of kind of dynamic uh, movements and stretches is really important. So this is where you can certainly add in your own creativity and things that might work well for you like have a particular nagging injury want to make sure that that particular muscle group is warmed up uh, but I usually say you know as far as wrestling goes like uh, neck shoulders lower back hips kind of like the four big muscle groups so uh, coming up with a series of different dynamic motions and movements to get those particular muscles warmed up um, and then also incorporating some specific things to wrestling whether that be uh, stance in motion, whether that be grabbing a teammate or someone, a coach, a buddy, uh, to do a little bit of hand fighting because we don't want the first time, um, you know, that someone lays their hands on us with a hard club off the whistle to be in that. So we want our body to be kind of ready for what's going to happen. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different things, creative things that a lot of, uh, the athletes that I've worked with do to, kind of get their mind off of what we talk about is like mindset red flags and uh, if you follow any of our stuff you've probably seen that all over the place whether that be you know thinking differently and you know different match whether it's first match of a tournament or the finals of a tournament or who you're wrestling against is probably the most common or fear of failure and um, so having them focus on something else uh, allows them to get their mind off of those other things that uh, they're 
basically outside of their control, so there's no need to waste time thinking about them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, like especially like this year. Uh, so uh, you know when Josh was talking about his mindset principles um, and kind of you know just saying them before every match that really really helped me and just kind of to master my pre match warm up routine because um, I think Josh would agree with this that repetition breeds success. So doing kind of the same thing over and over again, you know, especially like if you're just not changing things up and you know just it's kind of like insanity. You know, the more you do something, um, you kind of you know want a different result. But I mean in this case. Again, you're just like, if you win every match and you're doing the same thing before, just keep doing that. So uh, that's one thing that I picked up. Um, and then also another question we got, how do you come back um, to the sport mentally after you have like an injury? Great question. So we have a, a series right in our curriculum that um, really focuses on this of uh, bouncing back from injuries. So um, it's kind of like a five part series. and. Um, the first thing that you want to be able to understand is simply that this could be the best thing that ever happened to you. And, and it may, su may be super difficult to understand, you know, initially and at the beginning, but we have to go back to, you know, if you follow any of our stuff, uh, one of the consistent theories and concepts is our predator prey mindset theory. So basically, you know, without giving a full explanation, it's just, you know, making sure that we're always focusing on things that were within our control. And the injury, whether it happened, you know, five minutes of yesterday, last week, a month ago, um, can't go back and change that. So we, you know, really move forward from that and uh, realize that this could be the best thing that ever happened for me. And, um, you know, I think all of us wrestlers, including myself, when I was competing, we're all very guilty of, um, you know, just kind of not doing the little things. And, and it could be, you know, going back in maybe <clears throat> animal video or technique or stretching or nutrition or mindset or different things like that. Like it's much easier to do the physical <clears throat> practice, hit the weight room, get the conditioning part, cardio in. Like those things I would say, you know, pretty much all of your higher level athletes are doing that relatively, you know, easy consistently but in order to get to that next level it's usually those other variables that we see across the board so um, something that you know I always say to the athletes is you know the simple things are simple to do but they're also simple not to do mm -hmm. but learning from the best um, and that's what we do with the mindset whether we're studying the best wrestlers in the world or best business people or just the people that are really good at what they do um, there's some consistent variables that we find and, and one of them is, you know, being able to set routines and habits in these little tiny things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this gives you time when you're injured to focus on maybe some of the areas that you, you know, um, haven't been putting much time into. So I think the first step is being able to understand that, uh, this could be the best thing that happened to me. Um, from there, uh, anytime that your schedule changes or something changes, um, your life, whether it be an injury, whether it be the coronavirus shutdown, whether it be whatever, it's really important to go back and assess your action plan. So now that you're not able to, we'll just say you have a shoulder injury, so now you're not able to do upper body strength training, we'll say, well, we want to focus on the 95% of your body that's still, you know, healthy. So, mm -hmm. you know, creating a new strength training routine, right? So focusing maybe on lower body, which is something that maybe I wasn't doing at all prior to the injury. Um, so just going back and reassessing the action plan, if you're not able to practice, do the physical things, what are you going to replace that time with? Uh, so that's important there. You know, another thing is uh, do some research studying on uh, athletes, professional, top level athletes who have had injuries and come back even better and stronger, right? And um, there's a lot of them out there, whether it be wrestlers or you can think of, um, you know, all different types of sports. So it's basically getting you to understand and believe that possible. So the word hope is an acronym that stands on or stands for hold on, possibilities exist, or hearing other people's examples. So um, it's really important to, to build that belief system. And you can do that by, you know, researching and studying and, and spending some time doing that. So I would say those are three things that I would start off with uh, to recap their understanding and believing this is the best thing that could happen for me. 
Uh, secondly, you know, redevising my action plan. And thirdly, um, you know, finding a little bit of uh, research and, and putting in a little bit of time to, to find some good stories on other athletes who bounce back even stronger than, um, you know, when they were healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, um, I was kind of thinking too, like when he was saying that the best thing that could happen to you is if you do get injured and I, I think everything happens for a reason. So maybe you could have hurt something way worse, or maybe you would have been going to a tournament and maybe, you know, you got into a car crash or something like just a lot of different things that could have happened. If you like, you know, like it could be the best thing that ever happened to you. That's totally true. So how does someone who, you know, is not that very good, but is facing someone that's like a state champ or state placer, how do they still have a chance in a match? Right. So, you know, finding creative, techniques, thoughts, um, things, you know, that you are doing leading up to that moment mm -hmm. that you've kind of got pre-programmed in your mind. So um, some strong examples would be to really break things down into perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think oftentimes we tend to put way more pressure on ourselves than really needed, right? Like we have these super high expectations for ourselves. And, um, you know, so first understanding that like, you know, especially in the moment, right? Um, mm -hmm. Rest can feel like it's everything. It's life. There's nothing else that's more important. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can get yourself to put more stock and more value on the performance factors that are within your control within that match, and then from there, you know, be satisfied or dissatisfied with your overall performance. So mm -hmm. the things that you can control within the match would be simply, you know, your um, you know, aggressiveness. So like, you know, in the beginning of the match, we, we've done some research and did some different studies and, and found that the wrestler that scores first oftentimes uh, wins 85% of matches. And that's across the board. We just randomly picked some like a thousand matches off the track, wrestling, youth, middle school, high school, college, mm -hmm. senior level. And so obviously there's that other 15%. So it doesn't get the that you're going to win, but it sure is a better shot. So rather than being focused on um, man, this guy's really good, you know, uh, defending state champ or, you know, whatever it might be, right? Um, mm -hmm. Focus, change the focus to, you know, attacking first, right? So attacking, mm -hmm. guarantee that I'm going to score, but it sure as heck puts myself in a better position, right? Mm -hmm. So willing to go out and, you know, kind of pick the match into smaller matches within the match. Um, you can do anything for 15 seconds at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so, so being aggressive, um, looking to to score, letting it fly, going after it. Um, you know, just commitment to yourself, and uh, you know that kind of just brings me to another part of like, you know, all of your goals and everything. It, it should all be you, right? And we have a lot of people in our sports and in all sports for that matter that are just competing for the wrong reasons, right? And you know, maybe it's impressing, you know, fans or coaches or whoever. So going back to your roots and, and going back to your purpose as far as like why you're doing what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And you can find something that's a greater, stronger purpose that can that can allow, allow you to, uh, um, you know, to get away from those thoughts of fear of failure or letting people down. And um, if you can just put a lot of stock into your overall performance, it's a lot easier to think about other things. Um, couple other things that come to mind would be changing your vocabulary or, uh, you know, we talk a lot about like self affirmations. So for example, this is a very common situation of, let's say you're at a tournament with your, your teammates and all of a sudden the, the brackets come out and one of your teammates comes over and says, Oh man, I see that you've got blah, 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 you know, in the next round. Mm -hmm immediately without skipping a beat be able to change that got to to get to right it's like you know don't say yeah i've got so and so because you automatically just put yourself in a in a you know a disadvantage by yeah. self -belief. being able to say yeah i get to wrestle that guy right this mm -hmm. is what i signed up for i didn't sign up for wrestling because i thought it was going to be easy i did it because it's a challenge and i'm ready to go yeah right mm -hmm. and Oh, in that moment, you might not 110% fully believe, but if you can keep telling yourself that over yeah. the course of time, you will start believing in that. Um, you know, so just it's super important to use the really key words, and then you know your your movements create or change your mood. So acting confidently, right? Acting as if it were impossible to fail, and um, you know, kind of faking it till you feel it, right? Mm -hmm. So 
there's different strategies that allow yourself to get your mind off of, um, you know, uh, worrying about who you're wrestling and the opponent, you know, how good they are. Yeah. Perfect. So, like, I like what you said uh, when you were talking about you have to have a why to wrestle because I think that can, you know, really help you out. And so this comes into the next question is uh, how do you not get burnt out during, like, the midseason practices and, you know, you're just kind of not feeling, like, the motivation to wrestle? How do you kind of, you know, stay in it? And I think having a why is kind of a good start. That's definitely a solid foundation. And I I think um, a lot of athletes and even coaches, um, myself as a young coach, um, really missed the the boat with this one. And, you know, a lot of coaches will hand out goal setting sheets and stuff like that at the beginning of the season, which is super important. I still do that. Uh, But you really want to have a foundation. Why are you doing this? Right. So something you should ask yourself and get down on paper is why do you wrestle? And as someone who wrestled for you know 20 years I, I nobody ever asked me that it was just something I did right mm-hmm. um, yeah. but I, I wish someone would have so I think when you can get that down first right um, and obviously we love to win you know nobody hate nobody likes to lose but if we can find other things within the sport that we mm-hmm. enjoy um, outside of just winning and the actual competition that's super important because um, you know, collectively, if you combine, you know, say you wrestle 50 matches in a season, you know, and you're wrestling on average, you know, four minutes or whatever, you're talking 200 minutes of wrestling. Well, and that's such a small percentage of the overall time that you spend training, uh, practices, traveling, yeah. you know, different things, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you have to be able to find other things that you enjoy. And the other thing is um, setting <coughs> Goal or purpose for each individual practice, right? Mm-hmm. So, you can still follow the coach's instructions and what he has planned for the day. But every day you walk into that room, you should have a small goal that you're going to work on. So whether it's you know, man, I've been getting to my high crotch, but I can't <laughs> see finish on you know this particular when my opponent does this or that. So today I'm going to hit this particular move and I'm going to have my opponent or my practice partner give me this particular response. That gives me something to be excited for. Maybe it's physically. I'm going to, you know, focus on winning, you know, sprints or I'm going to do X amount of pull-ups after practice or, you know, Mm -hmm. challenge yourself to um, come up with things that you're going to work on within the practice. And that helps you be into practice rather than just in practice because anybody in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so another thing um, that was questioned was, you know, during the quarantine, no one can really have wrestling practices, like, you know, have wrestling partners. So what are some like physical exercises or maybe just mental things that you can do like, you know, in your home that would still benefit you in the wrestling room? Yeah. And I, I think my response to this would be back to your initial, one of your initial questions about like what to do if you get injured. Mm-hmm. So do sure. this time is like very similar to that. Other than like, you know, assuming you're, you're not injured right now, you can different um, physical stuff. So, um, kind of back to one of the exercises within our goal setting, uh, series talks about creating an action plan and, and something that, uh, I think will really take your action plan to the next level is coming up with something that's, um, measurable, right? So Mm -hmm. a lot of wrestlers, you know, even very high level wrestlers will say, man, I work hard. It's like, Okay, well, once you get to a certain level, um, everybody works hard. But what does yeah. that mean? So being able to identify, a once again, once once the schedule changes, we need to rethink our action plan. So right now, the schedule's obviously changed. We're not going to school. Uh, we don't have, you know, organized practices. So we need to be creative and get a schedule down. So uh, mm-hmm. oh, if you don't have access to anything at home, um, you still have your body, and I'm sure you can find some space. So... Right now, there is like all kinds of videos all over the place of at-home body weight workouts. Uh, We have uh, a series that's like 10-minute workouts that are split up into like different muscle groups, all body weight stuff. I mean, there's a ton of resources out there. Uh, So, you know, if you don't know what to do, you know, utilize online resources there for the physical parts of things. This is also a good time to go back and look at uh, video, whether you're uh, looking at your matches or... Uh, sometimes that can get boring looking at your own self wrestling. So find a success a success model, uh, somebody that you really look up to in the sport, mm-hmm. and so 
often wrestle similar to, right? So, you know, if your best move is a double, watch some Jordan Burroughs matches, right? Um, you know, if your best move is a high crotch, go watch some Brent Metcalf videos. Whatever your number one move is, go watch some videos of that person and uh, pay attention to the small detail, right? Yeah. And not from watching uh, other people's uh, matches as well. And uh, so video is good. Um, you know, mentally, right. There's all kinds of great books that we have a ton of, uh, content on our YouTube page, our website, all kinds of information, podcasts. Uh, so there's definitely a good time to be training mentally. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. They first start off with, um, you know, putting down a schedule, right. Getting it on paper and having things that are measurable. Otherwise, once at some point, hopefully we all get, we get out of this and we mm -hmm. get back normal. Yeah. Well, when we of this time frame um it's going to be very you know easy I, that's my prediction to see which people took advantage of this time and looked at it as an opportunity to get better mm -hmm. and which one used it as an excuse and did nothing and they got out of shape and mm -hmm. all that yeah the way you can remind yourself if you've gotten better is to measure stuff so if it's your workouts make a journal write it down you know if i'm doing push-ups monday you know i was able to do x amount of push-ups mm -hmm. and then the, you know, keep chart of it, right? Uh, because sure. that's going to mentally tell you that you're that you're improving, and uh, that can be really beneficial to your overall confidence. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. So, like, even like one thing that I've been doing recently uh, with my, me and my buddy Chris, we've been doing kind of a challenge. It's like you do a thousand reps of like an exercise. Uh, so last night we did a thousand neck bridges, we did a thousand shots, a thousand uh, sit ups, a thousand push ups, and you know it, it's like super crazy. We were spending like two and a half hours doing like you know like each one. But I think just like having fun with these kind of workouts. And like, even if you just, you know, start with 10 pushups and maybe do five more each day, you just keep adding on. I think it'll just really help you in the long run. That's a great so. suggestion. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, call up a buddy, you know, we're FaceTiming right now. We could easily be doing, you know, a workout. Um, yeah. at the personal trainer for 10 years prior to becoming a mindset coach. Uh, you know, one of my favorite things that I would do, um, with like partner workouts is like grab a deck of cards, right. And you establish, uh, maybe it's four different exercises, uh, one for each suit, and you mm -hmm. flip it uh, eight of hearts, and that means push-ups. We both yeah. do eight. Mm -hmm. Something creative, right? That's just one thing that comes to my mind, but make it fun, right? If it's not fun, we're not going to do it. That goes back to just simply wrestling and being a part of the sport. Like, if you're not having fun, like, uh, it's not going to be very, you know, enjoyable, and it's probably, you probably are going to get burnt out at some point. So yeah, exactly. Have to, but it has to be fun. Step outside of the comfort zone and be creative and enjoy it. Yeah, mm -hmm, for sure. Um, and then another thing we had a question about, um, so for wrestling, it's, you know, it's super different than any, any other sport. You know, it's like combat sport, you know, you're, you know, it's solo, you know, it's you versus another guy in the mat. How, how does wrestling, you know, help you like in the long run, like in the scheme of life, you know, why should a parent put their kid in wrestling? Oh, I love that question. Um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, ways we can answer this. I think the list could go on and on and on, but if I would have to narrow it down to a couple or at least one that really would stick out in my mind initially mm -hmm. would really be just uh, the ability to overcome adversity, right? So right now is a prime example, right? Mm -hmm. um, so with this quarantine and the shutdown and social you know, distancing and all that stuff, uh, it, a lot of people are just so negative about it, right? Mm -hmm. And just so complaining and making excuses and blah, 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 blah. But I think wrestling really teaches you how to overcome and adapt, uh, no matter how small or big the adversity may be, mm -hmm. and be, look at things in a different perspective and uh, view things as challenging or challenges as opposed to hard, difficult, um, things like that. So, mm -hmm. right? is you know obviously super you know a challenging sport but within the sport of wrestling um, especially if you've put in you know multiple years in time um, there's really nothing that can come across to you that's like you know I can't do this or whatever because uh, once you've really committed yourself to the sport you put the time in you've learned how to overcome adversity and challenges whether that be the day-to-day -day stuff whether that be not accomplishing your goals and the setbacks, the injuries, the yada, 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 right? Mm -hmm. the, the weight, the hard workouts, yeah. this goes on. Um, so just in general, being able to have a positive mindset and perspective and 
attacking anything, any adversity as from the viewpoint as this is a challenge. Now I'm excited to, you know, right now, like if, if you are one of these people that I'm speaking to and like you have, you're kind of making sense to all this stuff, like you should actually be looking at this time as it's a, it's a fun challenge, an exciting challenge because there's no other way to really look at it. We can't just like change how, how things are running right now. We, we can't control that. What we can control is how we respond to um, the adversity and uh, I think someone that's a wrestler that's put in the time is much easier to, um, you know, to fall into that mindset and just be like, all right, well, I don't agree with it. You don't have to like it, um, mm-hmm. but but you can look at it as a challenge and be excited for the opportunity and use this time to get better. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. but I think overcoming challenges and adversities in life is so uh, replicable of the sport of wrestling. So mm, absolutely, and I I feel like if like if you're in wrestling, if you're like a wrestler, if you're a fan of the sport, like you're a humongous fan. It's either like you're either like do not like wrestling, you've never heard about it, or you're like you know a mega fan. And I think you know it's a it's you know a lifestyle kind of change if you're kind of just getting into it. Uh, but it's just you know setting goals, over, overcoming adversity, and just you know you know having discipline for yourself. And I just think it's so much so much positive. Like it's unreal. Um, but hey, that's uh, pretty much you know the you know the basis of all the questions there. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, not really. I mean, uh, you know, just to kind of restate some of the things I had mentioned earlier. Um, you know, obviously during this time, you, you've got to find some things to fill some of the gaps. And uh, I encourage people to to check out our website, wrestlingmindset.com. Go to our YouTube page. We have lots of videos on there. Our website has a bunch of blogs with great articles. We have podcast that uh, uh, one of my favorite series of our podcasts is we interviewed um, a whole bunch of guys from the NCAA tournament a couple years ago, Yanni Diakmahalis, Seth Gross, uh, Mike, Michael Machiavellio, um, a, a whole bunch of different guys, and we dig deep into the mental aspect of what works specifically for them. I would go back and find those if I were one of the people uh, listening to your channel today and, uh, you know... There is so much you can learn from hearing other people's experiences, and that goes back to that, you know, acronym of hope. And uh, maybe you can find one thing in there, um, you know, and you can create it and make it part of your own style. And uh, a lot of times, you know, people when they're asked down the road after they're done competing, there's usually a pivotal moment, and sometimes it might just be hearing something or some a coach telling you something. And uh, why not take this time to? to learn and become a student of the sport. So uh, we have a lot of awesome stuff out there. And uh, if anybody wants to, you know, learn more about it, uh, they can, you know, uh, contact myself and and we can certainly, you know, do a trial session and stuff too. But Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, use this time as an opportunity to get better. Attack it as a challenge. And uh, when you can do that, I think uh, we'll get out of this thing a little bit faster. If we sit and watch the the clock tick, feel like an eternity. So... Mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yeah, that's all I got. I, and lastly, I just want to thank you for having me on. Uh, big fan Absolutely. of your uh, YouTube show, and congrats mm-hmm. on the state title this year. It was super thank awesome. You. Mm-hmm. Know the backstory and the journey, and how last season ended, and how you came back this year, and just all of that goes back to what we're talking about with overcoming mm-hmm. adversity. Uh, such a great thing, and your team is just a really great, awesome group of people to be around. So awesome. Uh, doing what you're doing you're providing some awesome content to uh fellow wrestlers out there and uh you know fun yeah. man keep up oh. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. So if you guys, you know, are watching, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much to Josh for coming on uh, the podcast and talking. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out Wrestling Mindset. See you guys next video.